So the Prophet ﷺ, he tells us, first there was Allah and there was nothing else. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Al-Arsh, then He created the throne. And you know, you have to understand, we're talking about the throne, we're talking about the throne now being created independent of any angels that carry it, independent of the heavens and the earth, independent of anything that comes under it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the throne. Now everything that we've spoken about in regards to the universe, in regards to the galaxies, in regards to the, the, the trillions of stars and the trillions of planets and so on and so forth, all of that comes under as sama dunya the first heaven. Rasulullah the Prophet he actually tells us that uh, the comparison of this heaven to the next heaven is like a ring in the desert. So everything that we've spoken about that is mashhuda, all of that is just one heaven. Everything, all of that comes under one iron ring in comparison to the heaven that is above it. Then the Prophet said that heaven compared to the one above it is also like a ring in the desert. And that heaven compared to the one above it is also like a ring in a desert until the Prophet got to the seventh heaven and he said that heaven in comparison to Al-Kursi. Al-Kursi is the footstool. Uh, which Sa'id ibn Jubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said is like a stair to the arsh, is like a stair to the throne. That, all of these heavens compared to the kursi is like a ring in the desert and the Prophet sallallahu said the kursi compared to the throne, compared to the arsh, is like a ring in the desert. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne and Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu as he's telling us about the different degrees and how far the different heavens are from each, uh, the one that comes before it, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, and Allah is above his throne, but nothing is hidden from him. And that's the beauty of it, is that even in Ayatul Kursi, in the verse of the, foot, the footstool, which is the greatest verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before he mentions Al Kursi, Wasi'a Kursi hu samawati wal ard, that his footstool encompasses the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his knowledge. Okay, Allah Azawajal mentions that He has full knowledge of everything that takes place in the heavens and the earth. Absolutely nothing from what takes place um, within His creation escapes the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and His kursi alone, the footstool alone, has all of the heavens and the earth under it. Now, Ibn Abbas radiAllahu Taala Anhu he comments on that, and he says that just you know, if the kursi, the footstool, encompasses the entire heavens and the entire earth, then what about the arsh? What about the throne? So we have absolutely no indication of how great in size the throne is. And obviously, even then, you cannot compare the throne or, or try to make estimations then of a size and assign it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they say kamithri shay. There's nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, he says that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions himself many times in the Quran as the Lord of the glorious throne, Rabbul Arsh al Majid or Rabbul Arsh al Azim, because it is the first and most magnificent of his creation, and all of the creation is under it. And it's amazing because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this beautiful creation, and when he tells us about his rising above the throne in Surah Al Hadid, immediately after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that, he's, that, that he rose above his throne, he says, يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا That Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything that goes in and out of the earth, everything that falls from the skies and everything that's produced from the skies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the slightest details of this world. So do not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is distant. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ He's with you wherever you may be. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stresses throughout the Qur'an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you wherever you may be. And, and, and how does Allah Azza wa Jal explain that? Uh, that He is بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ That He sees everything, that He hears everything, right? He tells Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam, إِنِّي مَعْكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى That I'm still with you, I hear and I see everything that goes on. My knowledge encompasses everything. And this is a beautiful effect that we have in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu that as every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions His majesty or He mentions His knowledge, you know, He mentions His greatness subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in a way that, that might create this image of distance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings it back to us. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَأَمِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءَ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ بِكُمُ الْأَرْضِ Do you feel a sense of security? Are you really certain that the one above will not sink you from the earth, from, from beneath you? Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully in control. 
Likewise, the Prophet وسلم, when he was with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq in that little cave in Ghar Thawr, what does he tell Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu? He says to him, what do you say of three? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the third of them. Allah azza is with us. Do not be afraid. La tahsan. Inna Allah ma'ana. Don't grieve. Allah is surely with us. So just as we acknowledge the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we realize that, this, that, that the king of all kings is not disconnected even from the poorest of his servants. The Prophet sallallahu he even wanted us to have this idea when we're making dua. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Al-Firdaus is the highest level of Jannah. And above Al-Firdaus, directly above Al-Firdaus, is the throne of Ar-Rahman, Arsh Ar-Rahman. The rivers of paradise flow from it. So can you imagine, subhanAllah, the rivers of paradise are flowing from the throne. And he said, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't just ask Allah for Jannah, ask Him for Al-Firdaus. That degree of paradise that is directly under His throne where the rivers of paradise flow from. It's also the greatest station on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ told us about seven people who are shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when there is no shade except for His. He told us وسلم, that when He rises up, He would rush to the throne and He would see Musa ﷺ already clinging to one of the pillars of the throne. So it's the greatest station in paradise. It's the greatest station on the Day of Judgment. And amongst the greatest angels are those that carry the throne. We, we, you know, we frequently mention them in our du'as. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Hamalat al-Arsh, those great angels that carry the throne. And they are four now, and on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us they will be eight. And these are huge, magnificent creatures from the best of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's angels. But even then, what are those angels doing? They're making tasbih of Ar-Rahman. They're glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're declaring the perfection of Allah to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent of the throne. Allah is independent of those that bear the throne. Allah doesn't need the throne. Allah doesn't need those that bear the throne. They're constantly glorifying Him and declaring His perfection because that's how we understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because before the throne, there was just Allah. And Imam Malik rahimahullah, he really gives us our creed. He gives us a methodology to understand theology and to understand our creed. When he was asked by a man, and this is a very famous statement, he was asked by a man, how did Allah rise above his throne? How do we understand this as believers? How did Allah rise above his throne? And Imam Malik rahimahullah, he started to sweat, he started to shake. You know, he was really afraid of answering that question. But he gave one of the most beautiful answers and perhaps it was because of his taqwa, it was because of his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and possibly saying something wrong about Allah that Allah azza wa inspired Imam Malik to give a statement that would become a headliner, that would become a motto for the people of Sunnah, the people who believe in the Prophet sallallahu and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, 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 and do not assign human dimensions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Malik rahimahullah, he said that Al-istiwa'u ma'loom, meaning Allah is, you know, or, or the rising, al-istiwa in the Arabic language is known. We know what it means to rise. He says, but al-kayf, how, is ghayru ma'qul, is beyond our comprehension. We have no idea what it, you know, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rises above His throne. We don't assign any human dimensions. We realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent of our dimensions. He says, wal-imanu bihi wajib, but to believe in it is mandatory. And to ask about it is bid'ah, to ask about it is innovation. So we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above His throne, we don't, we don't try to assign our dimensions to it, we don't imagine things, we don't try to comprehend it, we simply believe in it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to us. And instead what we concern ourselves with is really the beneficial things that we can take from it, the lessons, and that's the point. And so the Prophet sallallahu what did he tell us? He said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed His creation, he wrote with himself upon the throne, in rahmati sabaqat ghadabi. That verily my mercy overtakes and supersedes my anger. That is what is prescribed on the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His mercy is greater than his anger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If you did, then please do share it. And if you'd like to follow the rest of the series, then please do click on the top box. And if you'd like to see all of the other episodes and the other videos we have to offer, then please click on the box under that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing content.